Welcome to another episode of Infinite Insights, today we will talk about the rise and fall of the great power that is Japan. 100 years ago, Japan was a poor and closed country to the world, considered a problematic nation. After World War II, the country was in ruins, with devastated infrastructure and a lack of natural resources, seemingly destined to be a failed state in the 20th century. However, Japan surprised the world by becoming one of the biggest economic powers of the century, temporarily surpassing the per capita GDP of the United States in the 90s. The country is an example of resurgence from the post-war ashes, but its rise was not limited to the economy. Japan is one of the most peaceful countries with the lowest homicide rates in the world. However, World War II was a turning point for Japan. After surrendering in 1945, the country was occupied by the Allies and underwent a process of democratization and structural reforms, which included the dissolution of military forces and the reorganization of the economy. With the help of the United States, Japan rebuilt its infrastructure and invested in industry and technology, especially in the production of electronics and automobiles. The Japanese strategy was based on strong collaboration between companies and the government, as well as an emphasis on quality and efficiency of products. Japan also benefited from high demand for its products in the international market, especially in the United States, and the appreciation of the yen against the dollar. With these policies, Japan experienced rapid economic growth, with rates of up to 10% per year in the 1960s. This period became known as the Japanese economic miracle. Japan became the second largest economy in the world and one of the major global exporters. However, this trajectory of success was not without challenges. Rapid economic growth brought social and environmental problems such as pollution, uncontrolled urbanization, and increased social inequalities. In addition, Japan faced economic crises in the 1990s and 2000s, which led to economic stagnation and an increase in public debt. Currently, Japan has a population of 126 million, 2 million less than in 2010. This indicates a population decline which, combined with the country's economic stagnation, is not a good sign. However, before discussing the stagnation, it is important to contextualize the rise of Japan, known as the Japanese economic miracle. The country at the beginning of the 20th century was backward and to try to reverse this situation, it initiated a strong militarism allied with a rapid industrial revolution. This led to the creation of an extensive empire that included parts of Taiwan, Korea, and Manchuria. Japanese aggressiveness ended up pushing the country into World War II, which resulted in the loss of all its colonies and the destruction of about 80% of its industries and infrastructure. To become a power again, Japan had to tread a completely different path and relied on the help of the United States, which provided political assistance and credits for the reconstruction of the country, with the aim of democratizing it and preventing the resurgence of militarism and the rise of communism. The American push was essential in the early years of the post-war period. Large investments were made in electricity, coal, steel, and chemicals, while millions of soldiers formed a highly disciplined and educated workforce to rebuild the lost industrial capacity during the war. By the mid-1950s, production had already reached pre-war levels without having to spend exorbitant sums on defense and with democracy already consolidated. Other sectors of the country, such as the educational system, were also able to flourish. Japanese discipline and high educational standards contributed significantly to the modernization process, leading Japan to have the world's highest literacy rate in a short time. This discipline was a key piece in making the economy technologically advanced and highly productive. In the three decades after the war, Japan already had the world's third largest GDP, just behind the United States and the Soviet Union. In 1999, the per capita GDP was over $36,000, making it the fourth largest in the world at the time. Economist Simon Kozinets stated that there are four types of economies in the world, developed countries, developing countries, Argentina, and Japan. 
If countries were people, Argentina would be the guy who was very rich but due to bad choices ended up poor. Unhappy with poverty, he continues to spend as if he were still rich, which leaves him even poorer and more indebted. Japan would be the opposite of Argentina, the guy who was poor and troublesome but who got himself together, stopped getting into trouble, decided to study, worked hard, reinvented himself and innovated, and gradually became rich. However, like any country, Japan also faces challenges and needs to constantly reinvent itself. The 1990s became known as the lost decade, causing problems still felt today in the land of the rising sun. This is because a large real estate bubble burst, causing a stock market crash. To give an idea, it took about 12 years for the Japanese GDP to recover to the same level as 1995. Since 2009, many Japanese companies have started hiring only temporary workers. In 1997, the peak of the country's real wages began to fall, and since then, they have fallen by about 13%, an unprecedented number among developed countries. In addition, the country's internal debt-to-GDP ratio has grown at a galloping rate, exceeding 200% 10 years ago. With an aging population, Japan's economic decline has accelerated, allowing the rise of other East Asian countries, especially South Korea. However, it is important to note that Japan is a rich country, albeit stagnant and indebted, while Argentina is poor. On the other hand, there are more positive things to be said about Japan. The country is among the top 10 most peaceful in the world, despite having Russia, China, and North Korea as neighbors. Japan has a small military force for self-defense, but is increasingly forced to invest in its armed forces internally, due to recent changes in world geopolitics. Internally, Japan is a peaceful and safe country, with the lowest homicide rate of any other country in the world, with a rate of less than 0.3 per 100,000 inhabitants per year. Compared to South Korea, Japan's homicide rate is twice as low, and compared to the United States, it is 20 times lower. It is also important to talk about the culture of honesty in Japan and clarify some information about the suicide rate in the country. It is common to hear that Japan has the highest suicide rate in the world, but in fact, this is not true. According to the World Health Organization, Japan's suicide rate is 20.5 per 100,000 inhabitants per year, which is a relatively high rate, but still below from several other countries, including the United States, Sweden, Poland, South Korea, and Uruguay. Furthermore, there is a concern in Japan about the lack of innovation and economic growth. In the 1980s and 1990s, the country surprised the world with various innovations from brands such as Sony, Toshiba, Honda, and Nintendo. However, since then, innovation has decreased dramatically. An important issue is the entrepreneurial mindset that is no longer the same in Japan, as young people have been increasingly encouraged to work for large corporations rather than to start their own businesses and innovate. Coupled with the low birth rate and the large elderly population in the country, many experts believe that not only will the Japanese economy face serious problems in the future, but the Japanese ethnicity will also decrease drastically year after year. Finally, thank you for watching up to this point, and if you liked it, please help us continue producing content like this by leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, and leaving a comment telling us what you thought of the video. It will help us a lot. See you next time.